Well, welcome back. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis may not have announced he's running for president, but he sure is acting like it. He launched a book tour. He plans to visit three early presidential primary states over the next few weeks, Iowa, Nevada, and New Hampshire. Let's talk about it with Kimberly Leonard. She's policy and politics correspondent for Insider. Up late with me tonight here on The Final Five to talk about it. Welcome to the show, Kimberly. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Uh, Ron DeSantis scored this incredible re-election victory, and the next day on some of the major papers, one of the headlines I remember was the future. Clearly, there are people who believe Ron DeSantis is a place in national politics. He sure does, too. He's running, isn't he? He definitely is doing all the things that people who are running for president are supposed to do, you know, checking all the right boxes, gaining notoriety, getting a lot of press. And that cover that you were talking about was on the New York Post, and it was a picture of he and his beautiful wife and his children. And it really did paint this picture of, you know, the future, this this young family um, potentially up against the oldest president in history. So it's going to be fascinating to watch how it plays out during the primary. One of the things that a lot of people talk about when you look at the Republican Party over the last couple of years is they, they really cleared the deck for Donald Trump uh, in 2020. It was very contentious to get to that point in 2016 after the 2016 primaries. And there was a lot of talk about not having a bench for the future. Marco Rubio, obviously, is somebody who would like to keep his name in the national conversation. But we're not talking about him much anymore. It's been about DeSantis. People were talking about this hypothetical DeSantis versus Trump primary matchup. Um, it's, it's interesting because we know that Donald Trump has taken a lot of credit for boosting Ron DeSantis' profile to the governor's mansion. I mean, definitely. The the thing is, though, the last time he endorsed him, DeSantis barely squeaked by. It did help him a lot in the primary, and it probably helped him in the general. But this time, DeSantis really rested on his own laurels. He ran on his own, and he won by 20 points. Now, Florida has become a lot more red in that time, and DeSantis had a very clear record of contrast to run on, especially when it came to COVID policies. But he's, you know, really seems to be the one who's who's closest to Trump in terms of his greatest rival. However, there are lots of other Republicans who are going to run, most likely. And we only have two others besides Trump who've declared. So it could be much more crowded. You know, it's interesting, too, because when you look at uh, the through the years, governors usually uh, became presidents. You could think of Jimmy Carter. You could think of uh, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton. The last few presidents have either been billionaires or senators. So it's been a while since we've seen a governor make that jump. Nikki Haley is one of the ones who would also like to make that jump there. You know, there are people that would say as, as old as Donald Trump and Joe Biden are, they might say Ron DeSantis in his 40s may not have, uh, might not have the life experience to be president. But it seems like the voters haven't been phased by that. Well, the thing about being a governor that I think works for a lot of candidates is that they can show that they really thrive in this executive office. And so they really can lead the way, make a lot of news, get some big headlines. And so it's understandable that governors would really be able to, you know, run very clearly on certain records, whereas with senators, it, it can be a little bit harder. Yeah. Although the benefit that they have is that they can really explore a lot of different policies. For governors, it can be a little bit harder to say, well, I have experience in foreign policy, for example. Um, so that's where you sort of run into potentially some of the issues that we've seen with past governors who, you know, came out early and wanted to be president, such as Scott Walker, who then struggled on the debate stage, went up against some of these heavy hitters who've been in the Senate. Uh, Ron DeSantis has really leaned into this, uh, this I, I hate the term culture war because it's so broad, but he certainly hasn't been afraid to jump into these, these situations. He uses the word woke as a noun, verb, and adjective to uh, describe just about everything. But, you know, took on Disney and, and signed that bill where now he has some control over the district with Disney, with the, one of the state's largest employers there. Uh, I, these culture issues, is this something that has been popular among voters there uh, leading up to his reelection? It does because of the way that he frames it and the way that he talks about it and the way that his wife does too, frankly, as a mom of, you know, three young kids. And so I think that is what has helped him where he ends up doing these press conferences that are broadcast on his Facebook page that people can watch. He's challenging the media's questions to him when they come up. I don't know to what extent it'll resonate more nationally, but I think a part of it too is that perhaps parents were willing to overlook a lot of the concerns in schools given 
the fact that schools here were actually open in Florida compared to a lot of other states. Nope. And so you had a lot of people fleeing blue states yeah. to come to Florida because they could actually send their kids to school. And I'm glad you mentioned Casey DeSantis as well, who was very front and center, not just in in his reelection bid. She was there for his initial bid for, for the governorship. She went through a very high profile battle uh, with breast cancer, which uh, fortunately she has beat. She looks healthy. She looks great. And it really is, uh, uh, I would say some people have described her as his secret weapon here in this case uh, in, tor in terms of relating to, to Americans, relating to people who might be on the fence about him. And she is so much more than a secret weapon. I mean, they are in lockstep. They, she, you know, manages his image. She man makes him more personable. She, some people go as far as to calling her co-governor. I mean, that really reminds me a lot of the relationship between uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton, um, mm -hmm. given, you know, this sort of two for one deal that sure. you're getting, this package deal. Um, and that's what, I mean, I, I've written about her a lot and she's, she's a force to be reckoned with and, and he knows it and he's very comfortable with, with uh, the strong presence that she has in his life. Something tells me the dynamic between Ron and Casey DeSantis this uh, will be portrayed much differently than Bill and Hillary Clinton uh, over the years, no doubt about that. But regardless, we're just getting started here with this Kimberly Leonard from Insider. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. And obviously, uh, something we'll be uh, relying on your expertise for in the future. I'll be here in Florida. <laughs> and I will too <laughs> very soon. Thanks. We're back after this here on The Final Five.